right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Jay here. Good to see you here on the Ono Tech channel where we do videos or live streams about some of the stuff that just doesn't fit on the Ono Coffee channel, like the different tech and different projects that I'm working on that I just want to share with you to just share with you and all that. So today I've got the Air Day Sling Max 3 Max X Pack to share with you. I Back in February, well, back in October of last year, my normal carry bag, this small messenger bag from Timbuktu, was stolen. And that was kind of a blow. It's something, it's a bag that I had for many, many years. Really love that bag. And actually, I was planning to have it relined because the liner was coming done. And, um, well, that's not going to happen. So I kept trying to figure out for the next several months, what can I use to, you know, replace that bag and, you know, what can I use? Because some of the other bags I used were a little bit flimsy, and I didn't want to carry like a traditional camera bag because uh, it just doesn't suit a lot of what I want to do. And a lot of it that I'm using it for is a lot of traveling. So I'm traveling and shooting videos for the main channel. And, you know, I need something that'll be easy to run around with, compact, and can hold everything. Now, one of the things that I am going to point out here is that this day sling three works because the cameras are small. I'm mainly using Sony ZV-1 cameras, which are super compact. They're all built in. They have, you know, built-in lenses and everything, but they shoot great video. I mean, just have a look at the videos on the main channel. They shoot great video, compact, easy to use, inobtrusive, meaning that I can hold the camera, talk to the, the subject and not have that camera be in their face, right? If I'm using something like the FX 30 or something bigger, it, you know, the camera starts to play a role. All right. So I needed something that I was going to take with me on my trips. And so back in February, I had a couple trips coming up, one to Las Vegas for the National Association Broadcaster Show. And then the next week to go to this SCA Expo, the Coffee Expo in, what was it? In Portland, Oregon come home for a couple weeks and then fly off on a month long trip and going to Malaysia, Bangkok, Manila, across the Philippines, and then up to Tokyo. So a total of 30 days, exactly one month I was away on the road in Asia. And so I really needed something that I was going to be able to use. And this is something that I use daily, especially in the Asia portion of it. But anytime I was traveling, the cameras were with me every day. And so what I got was the, the Air Stay Sling 3 Max X Pack. And what does that mean? So this is it right here. This is it. This is the the, the 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 sling. It was one of the larger ones. There's a travel one that is larger. And I was really hesitant to get that one because I I really wanted to keep things as compact as possible. I it took me a long time to get used to this bag. It, just because it's a, such a different form factor than having a messenger bag that's wide open and has all, pretty much just a big open compartment and you kind of fit everything in. But I didn't want to go with the smaller of the airs, like the Day Sling 2 or, or anything like that, or even just a regular Day Sling 3 without the Max. The Max is a little bit bigger than the Day Sling 3 regular. Now, why did I go with the X-Pack? The X-Pack is this kind of, as you can see here, there's a, this like ribbing, it's kind of stitch ribbing in here, and it's this nylon-ish water-resistant pouch, and you know, it's got water-resistant zippers. Now, despite the fact that it was raining a lot in Asia, I really didn't get out in, in I really didn't get this wet, so I didn't have to, I didn't really worry too much about that. The build quality of the air is really nice. I have to say it's really well done, like and this fabric is supposed to be like a sailing type of sailing sail, the type of fabric they use to make sails. So it's supposed to be very durable and it looks nice. And what I really liked about this one that kind of pushed me over the edge, it is a bit more expensive. I can't recall the exact cost at the moment, but this particular version is more expensive is because it has this little bit of fun orange interior. So let's open this up here a little bit, show you a peek. There it is, this X-Pack oranginess and it's padded there's some padding here in the back part there's some padding 
there's not really any padding in the front. Basically, there's the X-Pack layer and then whatever this orange nylon. But the thing I like about the orange is that it helps you to see visually what's inside and um, make it easy. Well, we'll get into what's inside here in a moment. I'm really kind of enjoying that part. There's a couple accessories you can see here on the side. There's a couple loops here. Here, one loop here. There's. I wish there was a matching loop there. There's a loop here and a loop here. And I first started with this one. This is the a Night Eyes locking carabiner in black. I, tr I want it to be black so it's as inobtrusive as possible. I don't want it to be a drag. I don't want to attract attention. But the idea is that you're going to take this and have it hooked in here. And I've you can you buy this separately, and then this piece. This piece is uh, part of the Peak Design system where you can clip in. Um, those little peak design, whatever you call those tabs. And what I wanted was something that would hang down that I could take my rig and click it into place and kind of low sling it when I want it to be hands-free or just kind of like relax for a moment. Now you'll see as we build the camera, it's kind of big and this, even though it looks reasonably short, will turn out to be too long in, in the long run, right? Like the, how far the camera rig droops down my leg, it makes it a little bit irritating for me. So we're going to put this back on here. This is, this goes on this loop. How did this go on here? It's supposed to go like that, right? Okay. So I wanted to keep it in this orientation so that it'd be easy to lock the camera into place. And the nice thing about these carabiners, they do have a little locking mechanism that prevents you from opening them. Right, that's a nice feature. And the night eye is really nice. I just bought a couple of night eyes for my keys. We'll get to that in a bit. And then on the other side here, I just bought this. Actually, I bought this really recently, like a couple weeks ago. This is the 511, um, I don't know what the one, MD1 or whatever they call it. And this is a smaller type of connection. Basically, you, it, it just sits on your belt loop. And here's a, a little clip. My intention is to do something similar with this because I want it to be riding closer. I want it to be riding tighter. So maybe rig that in somehow like this and hopefully that'll be, or I'm just gonna, I don't know what I wanna do with it, but I, I, this one, I, instead of getting black, I wanna get something a little bit contrasty because this is open. There's always the potential that could fall out, but unlikely, but at least this way I visually I can see it more and maybe I wanna get into it. So, so on features wise, we got the handle. The handle's quite handy. <laughs> like there's a number of times I was able to use this. A lot of times I'm really just, you know, slinging it like this or slinging it here or on the back. And for that, it works. And the nice thing about this, it has a long strap that you can, you know, I'm not exactly the most svelte person. So this really works well for, for even for me. And, um, it's relatively comfortable and you can just, you know, so this way you can sit this on the small of your back or somewhere on your back that just that little nook and cran, that little, that little position where it's just comfortable, right? You can fit that on here and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, one of the things that it does have a feature that I'm, oh, I'm, I'm kind of like hmm, tepid on at the moment is this, what they call fid lock. And this is a magnetic lock system that overall works really well. How you act, you can't twist it off. You can't bend it off. It has to slide. And they have these two little raised areas here. So you can use opposing force to, dis to help to disconnect it. The magnet's fairly strong. So you really have to give it some oomph. And then there's a little slide piece here. As you can see, it's molded here. And they slide together. So it has to slide together. You just can't, oh, I guess you can do that. But to get it to come apart, it has to slide off. Oh, that's interesting. I think these, oh yeah, these metal pieces do go inside. That's clever. It's a clever design. Super easy to put together. Now, however, there have been a few times, and it's most annoying where somehow the, the belt is twisted or something, and somehow it just kind of slides it off, and then everything can come tumbling. So you have to watch out for that every once in a while. It's not as foolproof as the the plastic clips that go together, but it is kind of nice and it is easier. In some ways, it's easier to use. It's a little more convenient. 
but then again, it will come apart from time to time. And typically when you're trying to it basically just gonna slide apart. You're like, oh gosh. So just be aware of that. That's the one aspect of that design that's like, oh, sometimes it did cause me a bit of a problem. All right, so let's get into the bag itself. We're gonna go to the main compartment, right? Let's go to the main compartment here. Like I said, it's got nice water resistant zippers, which is a fantastic thing. And then the top zipper has two, two zips with these longer handles. Really nice that that's like that because it really helps. So you just open it up and it opens pretty wide. If you, can, if you pull it all the way, you really can access pretty much everything that's available. And this is pretty much the configuration that I use when I'm traveling with the bat. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I have in here. So most importantly, I have two camera bodies, two ZV-1s. And like I said, these are excellent cameras. Uh, I have, uh, what is it? I have cages on them. This is the old small rig cage. They no longer make this one. I've had this since I started. It's got my name engraved on it. That was the cool feature they had. And then, of course, this is this is camera A. This is the A camera. And I have it modified with the PGY Tech plate. I think that's the PGY Tech plate. Yeah. Or is that the... I think it's PGY Tech plate because the PGY Tech plates came out and they're really low profile. I really like that. You know, you've got... Other companies will make plates, and I have this one from Benro, which I think looks cool because it's, you know, anodized aluminum in blue, but it's a bit chunky, and it's not as svelte and sexy. This is the Peak Design version, which I have on this other, it's on the B camera, but the Peak Design is really nice and low profile, and then you can use these, these little holes to strap things through if you need to, right? But let's have a look at the ZV-1. So we've got the camera here. The the cage with the camera with the cage and I put two of these red dots right on there. So if I wanted to, to connect it here, right, that can be done and hang it down. Right. And that's really for when I want to just, you know, let go of everything. So, you know, it's up to you. And um, I, I kind of feel, I favor blacking out. A lot of the details, so you know, they're like there's no, you can't see the Sony and Zeiss um, logos because I, I want to try to keep it as discreet. I even have a little in this blue tape I put on over the red dot that I don't have it on this. It's it's not covering this one, the B camera, but I just wanted to subdue the the red dot a little bit because sometimes that red dot's really bright and you know just kind of and like. I'm trying to find, I, I want to do things so that the on-camera guest can feel as comfortable as possible, right? So by, by muting the red dot, like I can still see it. You can still see the red through the blue um, paper tape, but it's just not as pronounced. And I think, I think that makes people more at ease with talking. And then on the B camera, I've got it a little bit rigged a little bit differently. Still with the Peak Design plate here, I'm using a UU rig, really low profile base plate, so I can get this. I mean, yeah, there's not. It's really a base plate than a cage, and really that's all it is—a base plate just to, so I can have this mount on it and put a little bit of this mount here. I don't know really what I use that for. I mean, I use that kind of to hang it if necessary, but. This peak design plate is a little bit big for that purpose, but you know it works and that's fine. But this also, but more importantly, if you're if you're familiar with the ZV-1 cameras, it, like unfortunately because it's such a compact camera, this little screw here is where the the hot the you know where you put the the tripod mount, and of course you can't open the door to the battery and the and the SD cards if that's in place because it'll block it. And so you have to take it all apart before opening up your, your, um, your compartment. And if you're just using the regular batteries, it's about an hour each battery. So not the most convenient, but anyway, so we can carry two, two bodies. That's really 
what I want, like a, a really great. Now let's go back to the, and that I put in the back con compartment. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I really like it. Then I have the Rode Wireless Go, Rode Video Micro 2. This is a, a really great little microphone. It works well. It has, you know, USB functionality if you want to do a variety of stuff. I don't really use any of it. I just use it straight and um, works well. I mean, I'm not a big fan of, of having lots of logos, so I, I did take a, a black Sharpie marker and wrote over the, you know, wrote over the paint to, just to give it a subdued look. Like, you could still see road, obviously, but it's just not, like, in your face again. I, I really don't want to have things in your face. The next thing we have in here... You can see everything's really designed to fit. It is this PGY Tech Mantis pod. And this thing is a great little um, handheld pod rig, whatever you want to call it. It's got great functionality. Like you can open it up and have your little tripod. You can move it in all directions. It's on a ball head and it does all of this. And there's so much like I can do with it. The only one thing that I don't like about it or that I you know find you know it could be there's this one little thing that could be better and it's right here right here at this joint this little joint here this this actually rotates right so if I wanted to move it I can but right here there is ever so slightly just a slight amount of play and like on camera right now it looks super slight and it really is kind of slight but once you put the camera on here and it moves it actually you know and depending on what your focal length is it can like really you know show now it for the most part i don't think anyone really will notice or anything but it, it's the one little thing that naggles on me about this but basically you just take it and um you can just do I'll just take it, put the camera, lock it in place, and then add the add the microphone. Plug it in and pretty much this is the way that I'm rigging the camera up for almost all of the, the, the on-location shooting that we're doing. This is really the basic setup, and I think this is super versatile. So many things you can do with this. Really easy to sit back and just kind of like talk to someone, and I'm usually talking to, if I'm shooting someone, a lot of times I'm talking to them just like I'm talking to you now, right? Looking at giving you my attention visually and then just, you know, using the wider focal length of the camera to, you know, hold you in frame. And I'm, you know, I've been shooting since I've been, I was in seventh grade. So it's not, so I have a little bit more experience than a lot of them. So I have better spatial, you know, um, feeling. But I can do this and I'll talk to you and, or sometimes I'll move it around and talk. And then sometimes I'll bring it so that I'm talking, you know, I can look, I can, include myself in the frame, come back, you know, and I can do this all with one hand. That's what I love about this rig. Like if I'm using the FX30 and, it, you know, it, it's a lot bigger camera, even if it's on a small rig up, you know, it's always bigger and it's always more obtrusive. So that's really what I'm trying to do is be as inobtrusive to the subject as possible. All right. So let's go back into what we have, what else we have in the bag here. So what I really like to carry is this little steady bag. This is one of my favorite pieces of kit. This thing, I really love it. Like, for, And why do I love it? Because I can use this little bag, this little tiny sandy bag to position the camera in almost any position, right? Um, you'll see a lot of times in some of the videos, like, for example, the, one of the more recent videos is the one from um, the bowling alley. Right, the the car, uh, the 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 the, uh, the one in Vermont Avenue. Uh, anyway, the, the coffee shop there. I was basically taking that this bag, put it on the table, and then you put the camera on it, and basically you can hold it 
at almost any position if you want. So it's basically there's some shots you're gonna see that are like of me and of Jerry that are kind of a low angle. This is how my, this is how we shot it was like this. Just set this. And the nice thing with the sandbags, they're really great at holding it. This was one of the things that was stolen in my kit back in October, and I was like determined to get it. Another one. They're kind of hard to find. I do have a link below to visual um visual departures, the manufacturer. It's it's strange to buy, but man. This is the one thing I highly recommend. All right. And then what else do we have in the bag? Let's see. Well, what are we fitting in here? So I also have a, a Peak Design cuff strap. You know, that's a nice thing. Kit. I have this Peak Design full strap, which is kind of expensive when you buy it straight. I got this um, in an open box. Somebody tore open the box and didn't buy it. And so they sold it for a lot less, which was really great. These are nice quality. I, I like them. Actually, the strange thing is I'm, I'm telling you I like this thing, but I, to be honest with you, I haven't used this yet, ever. Like I, I like the idea of using it. I, I kind of want to use it. Although I'm kind of wondering now, like, I don't know if this is designed, but there's these, like, rubbery things in here for, like, not for it doesn't slip, right? To slip. But I think they're on the outside, like, right? Like, this is the buckle. The buckle goes on the outside, and the rubbery stuff is here, ostensibly on the outside. Or I guess you could wear it on the inside. I, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But nice. It's pretty. It's a pretty thing, right? It's a pretty thing. So these two straps go in here, and the, the nice, the cuff strap, you just kind of clip it onto, like, you can clip it onto this. Nice. What I really like is that you can just kind of don't even have to pay attention to it as you're clipping on. And then you slide your hand in. This way, you don't ever have to worry about losing control or losing yeah, hold of the of the camera. I like that a lot. But it's not always conducive. Oh, and the nice thing that I, the thing that I thought was actually quite clever was, let's say you take it off, right, from your camera. Now, my my hands are a little bit... Not as felt, but this this little metal thing is supposed to slide. Maybe it doesn't slide anymore. The idea basically is, is it not, oh, there we go. It's just stuck on. So you take this and you wrap it around. Now this, on my wrist, it gets a bit tight because it's, you know, a little more chubby wrist, but then there's a magnet here. So you can kind of just leave it like this so it's not dangling, which is cool. Maybe if I lost a little few more pounds and I can enjoy that more. Or not. All right, let's go back to the bag and see what else is in. So that's pretty much everything that I keep in there mainly. Now, there are a couple more pockets here, and there's actually a small little zippered pocket in here that during my trip to Asia I totally forgot about. And so if you want to keep, like, your wallet, so I can put my wallet in there, right? Zipper that closed, and that'll protect it. There's a couple more mesh pockets here. I use it for uh, business cards. Oh, and I also have a small uh, small rig toolkit in here, that which is very handy to, to carry with you. Now, this is something that if you're traveling, you want to make sure you put this into your check baggage because... Um, yeah, you, it could get taken, so especially if you're, and I, so I always put this in the check-in baggage. And then also what I have in here is a Think Tank SD Pixel Pocket Rocket that holds up to nine SD cards. I only have five in here now. So I carry either this or sometimes I'll carry just this little small rig leatherette with four SD cards. Also, the nice thing about the Sony ZV-1 is you don't have to buy V90 cards. You can use, I'm using as a variety, as you can see here, I'm using a variety of V1s or V10s. This is a V10. This is V30. This is, what is this one? Extreme Plus means that it's a V what? I don't know, V V something, 170 megabits per second. And then like 
the other ones that we carry. I do carry a couple faster ones like V60s. This is a V60. I think this is a V60. Oh, V30. Is that just a V30? So, you know, that's the nice thing about the uh, ZV-1. You can use a lot of different media, especially if you're like me, you're shooting mainly 1080, 50, 50 megabits or 4K, 50 megabits. You don't really have to go too crazy. So that kind of concludes the main compartment, right? I better get my wallet out of there before I forget. Now, there is a back compartment that I use. I keep the back. The back compartment's got a little bit of a cover here. It also has, um, it's not really as resistant to wetness as the main zippers, but it's a sizable compartment that I usually keep the batteries in. So I'll keep upwards of 10 batteries in here. And so these are the new Woma, new Moas batteries, and they're quite they're quite decent batteries. I mean, they perform this new Moa, this you know generic battery will perform as well as the Sony battery. So for twenty bucks, you get three. And a charger. And they come with these little cases, which is really nice. So I've kind of worked out a system where basically as I, you know, as I have, as I charge them overnight and then put them in the case and I keep this piece of painter's tape on it. Let me just adjust that exposure. And so there, this, uh, this means that I know that it's fully charged. And so as I, when I use it, I take it, take this tape off, put it on the outer casing so that then I put this in the camera. Once they deplete it, or I take the depleted battery, put that in here. And now I know that every battery that has tape on the outside needs to be charged. And batteries that have tape on the battery are good. So I don't, that's kind of the system that I use. And it works pretty well. It works pretty well. But and there's a good there's a good sizable compartment. Should probably boost up that. And I just kind of toss them in here. There's usually a lot. There's usually a few more batteries. I don't know where they are at the moment. Then that's the back. And let's go to the front. The front is just a big compartment. And what I keep in here is oh, there's some matches that I picked up in Japan. I have an anchor battery. It's a great little battery. Actually, this is not the battery I use in Asia. I just picked this up on Amazon's Prime Day. $15. Normally like $25 or something like that. But, you know, works. Should be pretty great. I'm looking forward to using it. Then I have this cable. This cable, actually, I got at NAB this year from uh, the guys at YOLO Live. They were giving these away. And I'm like, oh, this is really great. It's got um, USB-A on one end. And we've got... Uh, USB micro, USB-C, and lightning. So pretty much everything that I will need is, is on here. Awesome. Thank you, guys, at YOLO Live. You're amazing. What else do we have in here? And then I'll keep, like, little knickknacks, like, um, oh, tomato ketchup for a Moss Burger. Okay. A little Oshibori that is now dry. Some napkins. And uh, little AirPods for if I want to listen to music while I'm driving or not driving, but when I'm traveling like in on the subways in Tokyo. And then on the, the there is a keychain hook here. So if you want, you can keep your keys by uh, hooking them in here and you won't lose them. Right. But what I did add was this uh, little tiny nightlight in case I run into a situation where I need to utilize some light. As you, I don't know if you can see if it's on. It is on at the moment, but it's very light. So just... There we go. Turn that off. So that helps when you're in the middle of things at night. It's it's nice. You just kind of... So I keep it attached to this, to this position. And that's pretty much it. There's the, the air... Daysling 3 Max X Pack. Really like the orange interior. So I've been using it now for five months. And what are my thoughts? I it took me a while to get used to it, right? Like 
you know, especially when I go to things like NAB or to um, the the SCA conference, you know, you're you're doing a lot of things, and you're you're also at a trade show. So I'm not at the trade show to document, and I'm I'm also at the trade show to attend, and so I'll, I'll need material. So what I liked about the old bag that I had is that I could fit a bit more material in like pamphlets and stuff like that, brochures in my bag with the cameras and not have to worry about it where this one is just too small for that, right? It's just not really designed for that. And, you know, I, I knew that going in because, you know, I'm going, I'm getting it because I, I like the compactness, right? I want the compactness, but I also want some, you know, something that I can carry more stuff with. And I wish the lashing points were different. Now, when I'm in the middle of my trip, I have a much better idea of what I would like better. But now, I, now that I'm now, it's been a month or two, so it's hard to remember. But I'll use this sometimes, like if I'm carrying like plastic bags or something, I'll sometimes just clip them into here, let that hang, and then that's my way of not having to hold on to. Because sometimes you just don't want to hold on to anything. And I'm not a big fan of backpacks, like you know those guys that carry the camera photography backpacks. I'm really not a fan of those for daily use, like. I have the Think Tank Photo um, uh, Shapeshifter, the first version of it, and I've used and I use that as my travel backpack. So when I'm, you know, going places, that's usually with me. It carries a lot of the stuff that I want, even the cameras. You know, a lot of most of the time when I'm traveling on the plane, this is in the check-in, and the cameras are in my backpack. But I don't want to work out of the backpack. That's only for transporting. So. It took me a while, like I said, it took me a while to get a feel for it, but I think now I'm much more happy with it. I wish I could fit a little bit more in sometimes. Like I can fit in like, you know, if when it's hot, you're traveling, I, I like to have a little sweat towel to brow my sweat. And you really can't put a jacket, a light jacket in here. And so you could in some of the other bags. So that's kind of the trade-off. You know, if you, if you let's say if you get a little bit of a, a light rain breaker and it's not raining and it's hot, kind of warm. You don't want to sweat anymore under the breaker. You want to take it off. You, you know, with a bigger, like a messenger bag, you can shove it in the messenger bag. This, it'd be a little more tricky depending on how bulky whatever your outerwear is. So, yeah. But otherwise, I think it's 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 been wearing well. I mean, I really, I really just take it with me and I don't really, I'm not really the kind of person that takes... That's that's very gentle with their their gear. Like I kind of beat it up a little bit, and this has held up well. Now I haven't really subjected to anything truly horrific, but you know, for the last five months, it's been it's been with me everywhere that I go, and uh, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. You know, really, it's just more of a camera bag rather than I'm not really an EDC kind of person that carries all this gear with me everywhere. I kind of want to be as light traveling as possible. But yeah, there it is. The Air Day Sling 3 Max X-Pack. I got to say that I've quite enjoyed using it. And I plan to be using it for quite some time to come. I don't really have any plans to replace it. And that's the thing. It's like, I want compactness. That's really what I want. Like, it's got to really have something new and revolutionary for me to like want to spend the money again. Like that Shapeshifter 3, there's some nice features. There's a lot of features that are missing on that Shapeshifter, that Shapeshifter from Think Tank, the first version. Like <coughs> Molly straps would be great. A place to put a water bottle would be great. You know, those are things that I would love to have. And then the newer version does have those, but it's like, you know, do I want to spend another $300? On a backpack, when I, that's the only feature that I want to change. The rest of the features I like. And I don't know if I really like the new pocket system they have. So it's like, if you have any recommendations for, I don't know, tailors or seamstresses that can do this kind of like bag modification work, I'd love to talk to them. Maybe I can get some work. Let's make some work. But the Air Day Sling 3 Max X Pack. Yeah. All right, it's been pretty good. It's been it's been good. I've enjoyed it. Maybe I'll follow up in a year in a, a during the one year anniversary to see how much more I like. I've got a couple more trips coming up, both domestic and international. Especially through through as we get closer past the through the holidays, we'll be 
looks like might be heading to Peru, Ecuador, maybe Af down to Africa and even Saudi Arabia. So we'll be putting this more to the test. All right. So hope that helps. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you are interested in what I'm actually doing with these, this bag and this camera, there is the main channel, Ono Coffee, right here. Um, come check out the videos. I'd love to see where we're all about coffee. That's really the main focus. Both we do videos that are on location and live stream and sometimes in the studio. So it all depends on what our interest is. So come check it out if you have the time or if you have the inclination about coffee. If not, then if you don't like coffee, then you probably won't like what we offer. Also, if you like cigars, we're on the Ono Live channel on Thursday nights. We do a live stream every Thursday night at 8 p.m. talking about coffee and cigars. So, But if you don't like any of those two, then it doesn't really matter. But all right, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helps. And uh, look forward to seeing you again in the future. And uh, if you have any questions or comments or ideas for videos or things you'd like to know more about that maybe you've seen on this live stream, or yeah, just drop in the comments down below and uh, we'll try to get to them.